This is August 21st, 2017 at 5.30 p.m. in the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Would you all please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Thank you. Kathleen, can we get roll call, please? McCampbell? Here. Wilson? Here. Davidson? Here. Fleming? Here. Okay. <coughs> uh, first time on the agenda, we have uh, a tenure award. And uh, we only give these to people that have a, a strong mental capacity. <laughs> they have to pass the psychological test 15 times. But uh, no, she's just been a phenomenal employee and. Uh, uh, we've been blessed to have her for 45 years, Amen. and uh, so we're excited to give this out to her. And I also have another surprise, so don't you get up yet. But first, let me, let me read this one. This is a certificate of recognition and grateful recognition of 45 years of dedicated service to the city of Burlington. As of July 6, 2017, we hereby present Sharon Stonehouse with the certificate of recognition, Shane A. Campbell, Mayor. And I also would like to present you with the Mayor's Award as well. And it says, be it known on behalf of the City of Burlington, Iowa, I would like to thank you for being a model Burlingtonian. Your commitment to your job, the people of this community, and the Burlington Police Department is noteworthy, and we recognize you today. Thank you for 45 years and counting. You make Burlington a great place to live, work, and play. On August 21st, 2017, this Mayor's Award is presented to Sharon Stonehouse. Come on down. Somebody once said, a young lady, that um, when I started working there, if we had typewriters and correction tape, they thought that was pretty good. And they don't even know what a keyboard typewriter is anymore. So yeah. A few years just take that work. But anyway, thank you. I heard a guy say once that you're only as good as the employees that you have working for you. And it may sound cliche, but it's true. It's true. And uh, we've, we've got uh, great staff because of people like you. So, all right. Um, next on the agenda, and Sharon, you don't have to stick around for the rest of this. You can get right on out of here. Uh, next on the agenda tonight is the consent agenda. All matters listed under item one consent agenda having been discussed are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If a discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Uh, tonight we have the usual uh, finances and miscellaneous minutes of previous meetings, pay, uh, payroll and city claims, beer, liquor, wine and cigarettes, reports and bonds. Uh, we have four resolutions. The first uh, approving demolition, nuisance abatements for various properties. The second is a resolution approving the applications for the purpose of receiving benefits from the state Re revolving fund water resource restoration sponsored project. The third is a resolution approving interlocal agreement between the City of Burlington and Des Moines County for the 2017 Bernie Justice, Ass Justice Assistant Grant, the JAG Program uh, Award. And the fourth is a resolution approving lease agreement between the Steamboat Senior Citizen, Inc. and the City of Burlington for lease of city-owned building located at 501 Jefferson Street. We also have two public hearings set for September 5th. Um, the first is a consideration of an ordinance amending section 135.11 driveway culverts of chapter 135 streets and sidewalks of Burlington Municipal Code. And the second is consideration of plans and specs for the 2017 Vineyard Street area drainage <coughs> project. 
Uh, is there anyone from the audience that would like to have any of these items from the consent removed? I see none. Council? No, thank Not you. I. Okay, can I get a motion? Please? I move to approve all items listed under the consent agenda. Second. Moved and second. <laughs> Kathleen, can we vote? McCampbell? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Well done. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is time now set for hearing for consideration of a sale of property locally known as 914 Louisa Street, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Publication has been made in the hot as prescribed. Mr. Teslin? Um, we just have one. Yep. This, this property is located at the corner of Louisa and South 10th Street uh, at the northeast corner, uh, 914 Louisa. It's a property the city acquired uh, through the abandoned building uh, program. Uh, it was in a condition that did need uh, removal, uh, so the, it is a vacant lot. The home had been demolished from it. Uh, we have received one bid from the neighbor to the north at 1226 uh, South 10th Street in the amount of $500. Um, some of the conditions uh, for the lot would be if the adjacent property owner purchases, purchases the lot, um, they shall uh, combine with their existing adjacent lot within 30 days uh, of sale uh, by the city council. If uh, someone else were to uh, bid on or purchase the property, um, they would have to receive a building permit within 60 days of sale for construction of a single family home. Uh, that would be, need to be completed with 180 days of approval of the sale by the city council uh, with uh, 180 day extension granted if progress is being made. So uh, currently again, just a single bid from the uh, property owner to the north to combine with their lot. Okay. And is, uh, is Randy here tonight? There's Randy right there? Okay. Good to see you. And Randy, you've got a bid of 5000 I see. <laughs> I'm sorry if my glasses weren't on. I apologize. Okay. We have, a, we have an opening bid of 500 So we're going, to, we're going to open up this bid. If somebody else has a bid that they'd like to, uh, to add, we're going to ask that you come uh, to the podium initially and give us your name and address and then put in your bid, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I can see all the excitement. This is going to be fun, guys. So... Prepare yourselves. Um, we're we're starting the bid. At, we're starting this at uh, five hundred dollars with uh, Randy John. Do I have another bid of this this wonderful property that's going to make somebody a lovely, lovely home? I can just imagine kids playing and frolicking in the grass. No other bids. No bid for five fifty. Okay. We've got a bid for $500 for Randy John going once, bid going twice. Sold to Mr. Randy John for $500. I motion close. Second. McCampbell? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. I know you were expecting so many more bids. So was I. I know. No, I'm all thrown a wall. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I have a resolution approving sale of property locally known as 914 Louisa Street, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Second. And I would, and I'd like to amend that. Uh, we do the amendment now. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, to amend Exhibit C of the resolution approving the sale of property locally known as 914 Louisa Street, City of Burlington, Des Moines County, Iowa, that the property be sold to Randy John of 1226 South 10th Street of Burlington, Iowa, in the amount of $500. Second. Thank, Thank you, me. sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> On the amendment. Right. McCampbell? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Okay, now let's go <coughs> as amended. McCampbell? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Well done. Mr. John, congratulations. We appreciate your cooperation in this process. You could have started your bid a little higher, but we'll talk about that later. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, next is a consideration of an ordinance amending the Code of Ordinances of the City of Burlington, Iowa by amending the standard penalty for violation of the City Code. Thank you, Chief. Okay. I think we can, I don't know if you wanted clarification. 
application again or not, but there's there hasn't been any changes. It, basically, it's taken away the imprisonment part of the city code for simple misdemeanors. So, in other words, if you're charged with a simple misdemeanor under the city code, the judge his only option would be a fine instead of imprisonment. But with that said, if it's written under a state code, then that same the original right. penalty would apply. Right. Question. Can you explain again why why we're dropping that? Uh, it's the indigent defense bill fund. The way it sounds to me, they're going to set up a separate fund that will have you would we would be liable to pay into that fund under a simple misdemeanor if they were to serve jail time and to get a defense, a, let's say a public defender, uh -huh. if you will. Right. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if I made that clear. But. Yeah, there was a court case a couple of years back uh, where uh, through that process it was uh, directed that indigent defense would be provided by. Uh, the state, well, the state now picking up the indigent defense, and as they're looking to find ways to alleviate costs, uh, this last legislative session passed legislation that if there was, um, if we had something on the books that they were being prosecuted under, or that it they had been jail time. that involved jail time that, that we had prosecuted them under, mm -hmm. that could pos that could involve that, right. the cost for ind indigent care would be passed from the state to us. Now, we don't have any clue how often that may or may not occur. It's just as this has come about, uh, this is something communities across the state are going through this process of, I don't know that everyone is, but a lot of, a lot of communities are eliminating the, the code sections that would, would, would have this as a possibility. It puts some limitations on the department and they just have to be pretty just think through how they're going to write up the original uh, charges against the defendant. There might be some spots where you want to have uh, potential jail time be part of what happens. Uh, with this change, we just need to make sure that uh, when they're writing up those charges that they're under state codes instead of city codes. Correct. Thank you. Thank you for staying on top of this, too. Yep, Appreciate thank you. It. <clears throat> Is there anyone from the audience that has a comment or a question? Council or questions or comments? I have me. Move to close. Mm -hmm. I'm a second that. Second. Pardon me. Okay, we have a motion to close the public hearing. Kathleen? Okay. McCampbell, Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Uh, I have a motion for preliminary adoption of the first reading of an ordinance amending the Code of Ordinances of the City of Burlington, Iowa, by amending the standard penalty <coughs> for violation of the City Code. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments, other, further comments, Council? Okay, Kathleen. McCampbell? Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. All right, we, next we have a consideration of a lease agreement between the City of Burlington and Weingard Realty Company for the Rock Island Freight House property at 710 North Front Street. Um, Mr. Tisman? Uh, yes, the city currently has an existing lease uh, with Weingard Company for the uh, Rock Island Freight House property at 710 North Front Street, uh, com locally known, commonly known as uh, Big Muddy's Restaurant. Um, the city owns the land upon which uh, that uh, building lies, Weingard owns the building, uh, so this lease is for uh, the land portion of it. Um, that lease was set to expire in 2031. Uh, they have a desire to start a new 25-year time period uh, based on uh, looking at it, having a new um, uh, sublease or uh, running the business at that location, uh, wanting the full 25 years for someone else coming into that facility. Um, so they have uh, requested that uh, we amend our lease uh, by updating it to a new 25-year lease. Uh, most all the conditions stay similar. Um, the current 25-year lease is for $3,000 annually. Uh, the option to renew in 25 years is for an additional 25 years at $6,000 uh, per year uh, annually. So uh, again, this is just for the land portion of it. Um, and no substantial changes from the previous lease agreement uh, were made, but allows for a new term for the uh, for Wine Guard Company. Okay. Thank you. Just wrap that one up. I'll come up okay. next. Anyone from the audience have a question or comment? Seeing none, council. 
Anything? No. I move to close the public hearing then. Second. Kathleen. McCambo. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Fleming. Aye. Your Honor, I move to approve the lease agreement between the City of Burlington and Wangard Realty for Rock Island Freight House property, locally known at 710 North Front Street. Second. Moved and second. Kathleen? McCampbell? Yes. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. And thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Next, we have uh, a consideration of plans, number four. Consideration of plans and specs for the 2017 Vineyard Street Area Drainage Project. Mr. McGregor. Uh, there is actually no plans and specs in front of you right now. I don't know if you've noticed, but we have set date that we moved until September 5th. Fortunately, when we published, we published for this date. So we had it on the agenda. I know that there are a couple gentlemen here <clears throat> that saw that probably in the paper. And um, so we don't have any plans and specs available for you, but I would say maybe just take their comment. Okay. Anybody from the audience, any uh, concerns, comments for tonight? Yes, sir. Uh, John Bouton, 2216. We all know who you are. I you know. have been patient, sir. I know, I know. Um, I think that the, um, everything, almost everything is going as planned. Um, I still have a little bit of problem with, and I talked to the city engineer a week and a half ago, and uh, I wasn't real happy with the the little metal grate thing that he was going to put in the ditch and he wasn't really going to fill the ditch in so even though you had a grate there you had the cement piece going down three feet which meant the same type of problem that you had before that so um, he hasn't uh, he considered what I had told him or asked him about but he hasn't got back to me about that so I just wanted to bring that up at this time, I'd like to have that completely smooth, maybe go down about six inches from the road base so that if somebody drives over that, they're not going to flip their car over like they have in the past. They'll just continue on going. So I think it's a big safety thing. So I think it needs to be whatever kind of design they come up with, it needs to be completely smooth all the way across there. Made a note. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Anybody else from the audience? Questions or concerns? Okay. Council? No. Move to close the public hearing. Second. second. <laughs> Moved and second twice. Kathleen. McCampbell? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Okay. Uh, number five. Next, we have consideration of plans and specs for the 2017 Jefferson Street parking improvements. <clears throat> Mr. McGregor. If you could throw up that slideshow for me. Um, in front of you is the plans and specs for the Jefferson Street and the 200 block uh, parking. Uh, as you can see, here's kind of the basic layout. Uh, the top picture is what the current uh, schematic looks like, and the bottom is, is what we plan to go to. Um, I guess I didn't realize that the, the, the parking number was actually 14 standard spots, and there's a uh, some handicap spots created. So I think I get maybe told you in a not correct number prior to. If you uh, hit the next slide. Uh, this is kind of what the typical, this is what it looks like now. Um, it's kind of the back of curb will be at this saw cut line on the left hand picture. And then I believe, I'm not sure where it'll be on that right hand picture. I think Jesse described that last week. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially everything to the left of that left, uh, somewhere in the middle there. Um, you wanna hit this last slide. Uh, the estimated cost that I originally told you is sixty to seventy thousand. Unfortunately, in some of the calculations at engineering, there wasn't a replacement for the concrete in the area that was being cut out. Um, so when that number was figured back in, it would, comes out to one hundred and fifteen thousand, um, which is almost double. It is yeah. double what I told you. So um, obviously, that's a major increase on a project. Um, that is, Nick. It is. Um, I, I think a, it's a project still worth doing, and we still have funds available to do it, uh, come out of road use tax. Um, if approved tonight, uh, we will go out to bid tomorrow, um, receive bids, and then but try and get it done this fall yet. Okay, okay. After, uh, after I think we're planning on early October start. Okay, okay. 
We got an email today from a citizen yeah. disagreeing <clears throat> with this plan. <clears throat> I'm just wondering, um, downtown partners, did they play a role in this at all? Have Correct. We, in, in the development of the plans prior to and then partway through, we invited several departments, including PD, Parks and Rec, Forestry, and downtown partners in, in all of this conversation to make sure we were designing it to, um, yeah. to meet what we wanted. Um, in the end, we try to keep it as low cost as possible without doing you know, too much aesthetic work to kind of get the nuts and bolts of trying to create parking spots. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. I do. Sorry. Sorry, Nick. Uh, she was, yeah, no, we still had questions, Nick. So yeah, ahead. sorry about that. Um, I guess I I should have definitely have brought this up when we at the work session. I just wanted to make sure I questioned just you know how how the mistake like this got you know made and just you know bringing our attention to it just so hopefully it doesn't happen again in the future. Yeah. Just, I, I would say the workload. I, I make of, mistakes like this too. I would say the workload like, of the engineering okay. staff right now is okay. probably we are underneath a big backlog. Right. And Just we're trying to shove the you know yeah. the roundabout agency street, which was yeah. fully designed in house, yeah. and there's no I mean I don't want to say there's no excuse, but ultimately yes it's there a mistake. Are reasons. But you know yeah. they were they were you estimates and they're all <laughs> estimates until they go out to bid anyway. Right. Um, but yeah. yeah, we should have probably had a more locked yeah. down number prior to bringing it to you. Yeah. But just ju just to add to that though, we have in the past also had so that just so that people know where everything went right and you know we went through the process right and the bid still did come back. I right. too, so that's just a process yeah. that can happen. I, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> no, right, yeah. and just vice versa, they've come back lower too. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and this year's been very competitive for concrete work um, yeah. for the bidding process. So yeah, and no, and not to, because th it's been a very long time since we've ever, you know, had an initial estimate that was, you know, fine, great, and then had a, another estimate and it's like whoa what's happened so yeah, you know it. just gotta throw it out there to be do, do that again Annie do it which one the whoa thing well I don't no. know <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are doing great work so busy <laughs> thank you so thank it, you it really hasn't been that long since we messed up that badly are you sure <laughs> oh come on I was trying to throw you guys whoa all right <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> so are we good guys I Public, huh? Thank you, sir. Any questions from the public? I see none. Council, are we good? I am. Yes. I'll move to close the public hearing, then, Your Honor. Second. Moved and second. Kathleen? McCampbell? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Your Honor, I move to approve the, rev approve the plans and specifications for the 2017 Jefferson Street parking improvements. Second. Moved and second. Kathleen? McCampbell? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. All right. Nick, what is going on here? <laughs> oh. Okay. Starts around. Okay, resolution awarding contract for the 2017 flow metering project. Second. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mack. That's the reason why I jazzed up. <laughs> So in front of you is that we went out to bid um, for flow meters uh, to be put without throughout the system um, in our sanitary sewer system and even in some of the combined um, to try and be able to have an understanding uh, for separation purposes but also um, future purposes with the sewer master plan. Um, if you have any <coughs> questions about the locations, I know that there's a systematic reason why they chose them, um, but ultimately it comes out to I think 10. Uh, non-contact for submersibles. Um, they'll be located in certain areas and then moved as needed. Hit the next slide. Uh, the engineer's estimate was 115,000 and we received two bids, one from Hawk and one from GPM. Um, Hawk came in at 118,818. Um, staff recommends approval uh, for Hawk. Okay. Thank you. Is there any questions or comments from the audience? Yes, none? Council, you have any further questions? Nope. No? Okay. Uh, we're all good, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Kathleen? McCampbell? Aye. Wilson? Aye. 
Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Well done. Number two. Your Honor, I have a resolution approving contribution to Dankwood Park Pool Dome Project. Second. Second. Thank second. you. Thank you for that second. Appreciate that. <clears throat> okay, who do we, who's here? Uh, lots of crazy people. You gonna talk about that? Yeah, so this is uh, kind of a continuation of the pool lease agreement that was previously approved by <clears throat> council. Um, as part of the, uh, I guess their uh, efforts to move forward with the pool dome, uh, they're looking to apply for uh, some grants. Uh, those grants require some local match. Uh, and utilizing some of the funds that we have in our budget and through the uh, lease, uh, is the route or looking to go forward with this. So they are uh, looking to count the $25,000 that's in the 2018 uh, fiscal year budget uh, for pump improvements that is a project we'd uh, be looking to do um, uh, towards the, uh, uh, their grant application. Also looking to uh, receive contributions from the city totaling 67,500 between September of 2018 and April of 2021 uh, for uh, deck improvements uh, at the Dankwart Pool. Uh, currently, we have, as I mentioned, the $25,000 in uh, the FY18 budget for uh, pump improvements. That's something we can delay until next spring uh, so that it could count as an improvement uh, for this project. Uh, ultimately, would benefit this project as well. Uh, and in FY22, we have $100,000 for the concrete deck replacement at the pool. Uh, that's the full deck replacement um, coming from hotel motel tax. Uh, they're looking to do the deck improvements uh, with this grant application for uh, while they put up the, the dome over the pool. Uh, the 67000 uh, would essentially come from the lease payments uh, that they make uh, through their lease agreement, uh, but would just be counted as a contribution from the city. Uh, as per the lease, they pay uh, $2,500 a month uh, during their lease period, uh, which is... Uh, 22,500 a, a year, uh, essentially, or uh, per cycle. Uh, so that's where that $67,500 comes from. It matches that amount. Um, it's not budgeted, uh, but it would be a, a coming from that source of funds. Right. Um, and then that 100,000 that's in the CIP would no longer need to be there uh, because that work would be completed with this project. Right. So uh, that would be eliminated from the Sounds CIP like a win. as well. Win. Yeah. So, why do they need to redo the deck now? Well, part of it, and maybe they could explain as well, they're going to do footers, uh, uh, footings for the, mm -hmm. the deck improvements for the uh, foundation uh, to place the, the dome um, around the perimeter of the pool. And there is some broken up concrete in there now that would uh, need to be replaced. Uh, also, we're going to have to run, change some of the water lines, uh, disconnects uh, between the small wading pool and the larger pool um, and do these upgrades uh, before moving into the with the dome season, uh, dome structure and is the fence going to be moved fence would be moved to the outside of the the dome structure so it, the the deck has to be wider in other words yeah and, and we have a couple of representatives here that might be able to explain a little bit better but so the reps come anybody but john freeling <laughs> Uh, guys, I basically knew the answer to this, but I wanted you to explain so people at home know what's going on. We're going to replace the vast majority of the concrete anyway as part of this project, so we figured while we're doing that, we'd just do the whole deck at the same time that it's done and ready to use for the long term. patch in the deck the last couple of years. In. So how, how far out are you moving the fence? About five feet on each side. Okay, so the, in other words, the deck is uh, be slightly increased bigger. in size by about, which is a good thing. I think we've, something we should have been doing all along anyway, but so... Yeah, thank you. Any questions from the audience? There's my friend. Yeah. Um, <coughs> my name is Dean Fennessy. I live in Burton, Iowa, 2217 Northern Drive. Uh, okay, I got one question, and it's two part story, too. In, a, in, a, in Iowa City or Des Moines, they had the same kind of thing, and the wind blew it down down to the ground, and also in Minnesota Twins had the same kind of thing. They had a heavy snow and ice, and it came tumbling down. <coughs> Can you reassure me that this won't do happen here with this same thing? That it won't fall down and injure people? 
who are in that pool? It's I'm sorry, but can, I'm going to have them. I'm going to have them come up and answer. Yeah. You. Dean demands an answer tonight, gentlemen, and we need to address that. One one thing I I could say is this pool dome is does have to be engineered. Has to be we have to have stamped engineered drawings. We can't guarantee with any structure in Burlington that uh, some powerful wind or something wouldn't damage it, but it will be uh, designed and constructed to meet snow and wind loads uh, as required by the state of Iowa and our building codes. Dean's concern, John. Going to the, the question about, I'll use the, I'll use the methadone for instance. If, if you saw something where there was damage to it, obviously we wouldn't have the kids in there. We wouldn't have it open until that got fixed. Um, can we guarantee it won't come down? No, just like, like you said, any building we can't. But it, it will be designed to withstand what will what we would we would see around here. So yeah, they've designed it according to where we are geographically. They're from Canada, so they're familiar with snow. Most of them go into a cold weather climate, so even the it uni, is stamped. Even the Unidome came down maybe twice, but yeah. so you know that, can't promise it won't come that's, down. That's, but they weren't from Canada they weren't, they weren't that weren't built the Unidome. So, well, so. Yeah. Yeah. I said they weren't from Canada that yeah, built the Unidome, so people it's different. <laughs> you satisfied, Dean? Yeah, I was just a little bit concerned about okay. that. Okay. Any other uh, comments, concerns from the audience? I see none. Council? Yep. All right. Good program. Kathleen? McCampbell? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Okay, number three. <clears throat> All right, we're resolution approving the acceptance of a staffing for adequate fire and emergency response grant number. EMW-2016-FH-00382. Second. Is there a second? Wow, that's something, isn't it? A lot of numbers. You're good, Bob. Chief, talk to us. Good evening. So I have the same presentation from last week, just a couple additional slides, so I probably won't hit every point unless you want me to give the same presentation again. I'll kind of go through and we have more of a discussion. So just a little of the background, you know, back in January, uh, Got an okay to apply for the safer grant for six people. Myself and the deputy chief, more the deputy chief, uh, worked on the grant, submitted it. Last month we were awarded the grant. Um, at the time we estimated the cost over three years to be about six hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars to the city. Um, that added one. Uh, that added again six people to the fire department. Uh, during the budget, after we submitted the grant, uh, council approved an additional firefighter. We, never, we have not hired that person, so we were holding off to see if we would get the safer grant. Then uh, just the note there on the call volume, and I'll, I think I've probably talked about that enough, but um, the justification, the same things that we used when we wrote the grant, the big thing they were looking for was the adherence to NFPA 1710, has response times, response numbers. Um, the OSHA two in and two out, we can't start interior firefighting until we have four people on scene, two people in and two people out. Uh, the number one thing that we were looking for as a fire department was being able to staff a third ambulance, and that is to keep our response times as quick as possible. So um, one thing we do a lot now is we're running across town, when, especially when Station 1, the Central Street ambulance is out. Station 2 has to cover their territory a lot. So, um, And also when you, you see the map of where our stations are, Central Station is kind of a misnomer. It's kind of too close to the river and too far to the south. There's a lot of... A lot of town off to the northwest, it, it's not within the five minute response time. Uh, and also with the call volume, the way it is, it's a lot of times we have two ambulances out. Uh, when we get to the third ambulance now, what you have to do is you have to take the firefighters off the engine and put them onto an ambulance to cover the call. So uh, there's an overtime savings. We're uh, putting two on each shift, but only raising the minimum staffing by one. Uh, that'll uh, give us some savings there. And the one point I did add from last week was the airport coverage. I kind of forgot about this, but the airport is looking at uh, getting their certification back, which means every time there's a commercial flight, we have to have a firefighter at the station that's certified in airport protection. So there's uh, 10 flights either, there's five in and five out per day. So that's a, at least a half an hour per flight that we're committed to. So. At the best, you're talking about five hours that there's there's one person that they don't do anything but cover the airport for fire protection. So that's that's a huge cost to us. It's something I've, I've talked to Jim about maybe, I don't know, 
some sometime down the road we talk about that with the airport because it it is very expensive for us to to have somebody there. That's all the every Monday through Friday. There's the ten flights per day, and then on the weekend it's a little less. But that does. Back when we first started doing that, we had a minimum of twelve, and we had about half the calls that we do now. So it wasn't a, a huge deal to leave one person there, but it it is a big deal now. Um, I did throw this in there from last week. Uh, that's a five minute response time from the different stations. So the red territory that little red dot there is station two a central station we call this affectionately known as station three that's the west burlington fire <laughs> affectionately <station. known> as <laughs> so right. as you can see there's a lot of area that it covers in green that's this, this that is the city of burlington that we can't drive to in five minutes and that's just the drive time that's if you're already sitting in the ambulance and, or whatever fire truck and the call kicks out that you start driving it takes you five minutes everywhere from this, from central, this outer reach, that's how fast, that's how far you can go in five minutes. But then you also have to figure there's a minute or maybe two if it's a fire getting your gear on and getting out the door. So now you're talking seven minutes. So those are really generous when we say a five minute response time. That's under the best case scenario. So you can see all this area right here, this is all city. There's no, there's no, currently there's no station that can cover that in five minutes. It's not possible. But when we add in West Burlington, that. That pretty much covers everything but this little bit right up in here. So that is very helpful to have that third station. And that, I shared that last week. That's kind of how we have our town divided up. That pink line there, that divides north and south. Those are our two stations, and this is the third. So you can see the, the vast majority of the, the calls are north of that line. Uh, the budget implications, these are uh, the <coughs> figures that Stephanie worked out. Uh, so for the rest of this fiscal year, being how we didn't hire the one person, uh, that amount that we would pay, our cost is covered with that person. Uh, plus there would be some overtime savings. The FY19 next year, uh, about 46,000. FY20, 219,000. And FY2021, 20, Again, that's only three months covered under the grant. So there's nine months where the city's covering 100% of the cost of the six firefighters. So, um, and then FY22, of course, that's the city. The whole cost is borne by the city, no grant money in that year. And I wrote down there, it's an estimate of our overtime savings, about 75,000 per year. So based on what we did with the last safer grant. So I think that's a, a pretty conservative estimate. Sounds good. Are, are there any questions or concerns from the audience? I see none. Council? Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> okay. All right, then. If we're good, let's, uh, let's take care of business. Kathleen? Campbell? Yes. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye. Did you like my hesitation, Chief? Did you like no, that? I didn't. It was all for effect. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Oh, well done. Okay. We have a resolution calling for an appointment to fill a council vacancy. Second. Thank you. Um, Kathleen. Kathleen had some conversations okay. with the county auditor uh, just in regards to what the po potential what the possibilities are for um, moving forward with filling this seat um, by state statute or state code provides two different uh, mechanisms one uh, filling with filling the seat by appointment within 60 days or calling for a special election timing on this does not allow you to go through a special election process um, it makes it rather difficult when it's more than the 60 days to the next general election to uh, know. I don't know how the state code, it doesn't really deal with this, this circumstance <coughs> for using a special election process, essentially, or elect, regular election process. Uh, so the recommendation from the auditor is to move forward with the appointment process. Um, from based off of what has been done in the past, Kathleen uh, looked at how this is, how the timing that's been done in the past by you have to provide notice 
in the paper if you do go through the appointment process, public notice uh, four, four, four to 20, four to 20 uh, prior to making that appointment. Um, of, you have to notice of your intent to fill by appointment. Um, what we have done in the past when we have done this, if you want to go, kind of go through that because okay. you've got it there. Okay, yeah, I was going to publish notice um, in the Hawkeye for the vacancy on Tuesday, August 29th, and then the deadline for people to submit letters of interest, um, they'll submit it to the city clerk um, September 6th by 5 p.m., and then um, this council at the next work session, which would be September 11th, um, you'll do interviews and review all the, um, the letters that you receive, and then um, on September 18th, at that council meeting, you'll um, appoint and swear in, I'll swear in the new council member. And then after the general election come November 7th, um, the top non, top vote non-incumbent would be sworn in early once I get the, um, from re once I receive from the um, Des Moines County Auditor the election, you know, schedule that they've completed it. And then, um, and then, so they'll start early and then the other two council members, because there's three openings, we'll, we'll swear them in December and they'll start January. And how, how, how will people apply? Can they do that through email or through, uh, does it have to be hard copy, uh, their interest and, and... Yeah, if they email it to me, um, they need to make sure that I say received. I'll say received so that way they know I received it. Otherwise they can just, um, it has to be in by 5 p.m. on September 6th. Okay. okay. What if we opt not to fill the spot? Can we do that? Technically, by state statute, you're supposed to either fill it by appointment or go through the <coughs> special election no process. Okay. Yeah. And our timing here just doesn't work well for the special election process. That, I understand that. But you're saying it has to be in by the 6th? I, I, thought, uh, I thought you said the 29th. No, September 6th. Okay. 29th is when she put it in the paper. Yeah, I'll publish okay. it in the paper. Okay. okay. Now, the, the idea of doing the people applying for the position there's nothing in state statute that requires that that's just a process that's been done here in the past okay. uh, as a so that's just a model to use okay. based on what we've done in the past for um, how to fill a seat in this circumstance so if the council chooses to do so we can make the appointment correct yes right, right. now there is of course the process by state code uh, where that and that's happened before, too, where we've received a petition to calling for a special election. I don't know how that would get handled by, if that were received at this point, I don't how that would get handled by the county uh, when it probably couldn't be scheduled before the general election. Right. She acted like I would receive it. You know, someone would submit it, I would receive it, but I would need to explain it's not really possible. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, any concerns from the audience? I see none. Okay, council. And, and would I be out of line to mention that I would have some uh, specifications on who that person might be at this point, or should I hold off on that until we discuss it on the interview day or whatever? I think I would just hold off. I'm work. Okay. Until we get down to it. But whatever you guys want, it's fine. Is that is that fine, you guys? I think whoever whoever should come forward and. Send a letter in. We'll deal with it. We'll sift through and. Okay, we're good. <clears throat> and whoever Careful. this is is going to serve till. Just yes, just until the January. general election. No, 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 November. 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 Yeah. First, yeah. And first meeting after the general election. Oh, gee. Then the top vote getter will be in place. Yeah, I know. Jump so you, that. all you folks out there that are going to run for city council, you just be prepared that you're going to, one of you is going to be sitting here. The first meeting in November mm -hmm. after the election. Well, after, after certified results. Right, after, after the, the certified, certified results. results. So, so potentially possibly. the second meeting in November. Yeah. Right, unless That's I right. have any time. Sitting in this chair right beside me. <laughs> you poor, poor lad. <laughs> Anyways. The reason I mention that is because when I first ran for council, I ran to fill an unexpired seat. Huh. And no one told me this ahead of time. So I thought I was going to come starting on January 1. All of a sudden, Hey, you're starting now. <laughs> oh, so funny. I just want people to understand that. So you had to put away your golf clubs and hurry up and get down to City Hall, huh? <laughs> All right. You're on the you're up now, buddy. So here we go. Okay. Kathleen. McCampbell? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming. Aye. Okay. 
You guys have been fantastic tonight. Let's just keep this party going. This is where we will uh, be entertaining comments from the audience. If somebody has a comment or concern we have not addressed, now's the time. Dino, one yes, of my favorite my Burlington. Yes, my name is Dean Finney. I'm from I live 22117 Northern Drive. I live here in Burlington. Uh, the usual things. How is it going with my place and bridge? <laughs> I'd everything like is, everything is still on place. schedule, um, okay. but we're look, that's uh, looking for going out to bid in the spring. I'm going to keep this up until you get it done. <laughs> uh, are you, now, are you going bye-bye or are you staying? <laughs> it seems to be a question that's on a lot of people's minds right now, Dean, so we'll yes. see how that goes here. Well, I, I want you to stay because then we can keep talking about the Cubs and maybe we can all cheer when they win it a second time in a row. This guy goes straight for the kill shot. Yes. I like how you roll, my friend. Yes, sure. Okay, uh, I know I'm going to roll. Uh, number three, uh, That's a it would be nice. Another thing on the roll is I still want Cascade Bridge. Bridge to be done Bye. before I turn 90. Uh, I'd like to see it done. I think we need it because there are many people in the park, and that's when, when I was parked once, they had tire cars pull up. <laughs> and I think it would be a good idea. And Labor Day is coming up. I wish you all a happy Labor Day. Don't get too wild. Don't behave yourself, <laughs> all of you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and give you wisdom of doing your job. I don't, I, I'll i make it clear, I don't want your job. <laughs> uh, so let me tell what you go through. And... I, I say my opinion, I, I say my opinion, what I believe in, but I think I'd rather not be up there, so. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're always respectful when you come down. We appreciate you from, from that Have side. a happy Labor Day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Hey, I've got a couple questions. I know we got a few. Well, c come on down, sir. I'm sorry. I've got a few questions I forgot to get, get out. You sorry. better write them down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, sir. <laughs> My name is Mark Collins. I live at 2647 Sebilby here in Burlington. I've got a couple issues. Uh, one, I've been fighting off and on probably for the last 20 years. But the answer to always get out of the good boy club down here was we don't have the money, which is baloney. Sunnyside Avenue, 1700 block to I believe it's a 2000 block from Hungry Bear to Pilger Street is an unstriped street. People, because there's parking on one side, people believe they can drive down the middle. I've had many, many close calls. I've seen other people have many close calls. It can't cost that much to go down lay a double stripe in three blocks of Sunnyside. It used to be striped. When they redid it several years ago, they didn't restripe it. It needs to be done. The second issue I have, which I've talked to you about, Shane, and you know things happen, I have an overpopulation of wildlife in my yard. Deer, raccoon, and possum. Part of the problem is our fault. We took out eight acres of woods when we built the Leopold School. The Diamond Ridge took out probably 12 acres. Yep. They don't have any place to go. I have a resident <clears throat> behind me that feeds the animals. Oh, here we go. Oh. Boy, there's always one. Okay. <clears throat> this spring, there was two that I know of deer that were killed on Sunnyside Avenue going to her house or from her house. So there's two cars that's been damaged and two deer you know, that were killed. I go out every day and pick up six to eight piles of crap out of my backyard from the deer. My garden is almost non-existent, which it will be gone next year. It'll be sod. Uh, I've lost a tree and a bush due to either eating the bush or rubbing on the tree, and the tree finally went over. One of the reasons I don't have his dog is because I don't want to clean up the crap. So I go out and I clean up the deer. I talked to Tim Scott a few weeks ago. He's out at my house, and he was going to look into a resolution about feeding animals like that. I know that's a kind of a gray area because people feed the squirrels, they feed the rat, or not the rabbits, the birds. birds. So I know, you know, where do you draw the line? But I just, deer can cause a lot of damage, and I've got proof of that damage. Uh, and like I said, now we're drawing in raccoons <coughs> and possum. You know, uh, I don't know what the answer is unless we can say. You just can't feed them anymore, period. What I'd like to see done, they did it in Iowa City and Coralville several years ago. They brought in sharpshooters. That's what they did. And they thinned out the herd. 
<clears throat> Aspen Grove Cemetery is overrun with deer. And I'm sure some of them are probably coming to come down the railroad tracks there along Sunnyside Avenue, up across Sunnyside, yeah. and have their party. So, got any ideas? Thank you, Mark. You've been heard. We can't g give you any ideas, but you've been heard, my friend. And uh, Thank you. Mark, do I still have your, do I still have your I number? I my yard. Oh, yeah. Make sure I get that because I, I can't address it, but I do want to uh, mention something. You've got that concern about Sunnyside, Nick? Well, yeah. it seemed like that came up we last talked about year. And I, I can't remember the timing of that was after you guys did the painting. But. I brought that up to you last well, year. Well, this was a... This is part of a conversation of there was a lot of things that were on a striping list at one point. I think due to budget cuts, it was removed and it's never been placed back on the list. I thought it was something else. No, that was what happened. I mean, I thought it was. I think the timing of when you asked me was probably way past when we were striping. You know, we were done. We'd already striping done the, the striping for the season. But that's that does make sense as something that could be looked at for this next season. Oh yes. It is really bad on. It's a safety concern. I mean. Okay. So that, as to a reason why we don't stripe Sunnyside, because it was taken off the list of us to stripe. I, I think that goes back to the point where out of the road use tax fund back uh, probably 2008, somewhere in that time frame, the, the maintenance and repair budget was stripped to very minimal. a very small amount. Um, and I mean, we we've got that back built back up to I mean it was stripped down to about fifty thousand I think a year and it's now at two hundred thousand a year that we do for just some general maintenance items like this so we do have more money that's available and that's an adjustment that Chris hasn't made back okay. but it can be done okay thank you Nick hey a couple of quick ones that I'll slide into real quick what is the status of the Patterson Street repairs. Hey, Nick. Let's wait. Let's wait until he walks and sits down next time. Uh, yeah. Cool. Last time I talked to Pat, he is still in conversation with the, the purchaser's attorney or the, okay. the landowner's attorney. Okay. I don't know if he's make, made much headway. What's the deadline for the Apollo project? Apollo project. Deadlines? Oh, for me, right? I mean, we're, we basically just have abstract work that has all been done. We just got back that back at the end of last week. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you've made con made contact with the purchaser yet. I I need to follow up with Jesse to see a timing on that. But we have the information too closed. Just need to set. We just time we didn't period. get that till either Friday or over the weekend, one or yeah, the other. But the end of the week. Nick, what about North and North Fourth Street? Sorry, Andy. <gasps> that's that's in the public works public works report. But you, I think they're starting tomorrow. Actually, yeah. they're um, here, huh? Pepsodani. Yep. Okay. Yeah, they've, they've hired some subs. They've hired Phi to okay, do a lot you. of the pipe work. So you'll see some activity going on. Their footprint should be fairly small. Um, they will have street closure signs. It's a low traffic road, so they'll have it on the corners there. Um, and when they're dropping pipe overhead, I've asked them to take some sort of safety concerns with Bluff Road. I don't think there's a strong likelihood that pipe or people right. or trees or stuff could end up on that road, but I have a little concern. So Thank you. Uh, what's the status of the depot restaurant project? <laughs> we submitted. As a have lease. we had any further discussion? <laughs> we, sub we submitted a lease to Matt the end of June. I uh, talked with him last week, and he's not ready to make any or provide any comments yet on suggested modifications to that. Um, we're waiting for that, but he's just not in a position yet to give us that. Okay. So in until we get something back from him to start making any potential adjustments to that, we we don't have anywhere to go with that. Now, that being said, you're doing some of the components of the white box now, aren't you, or looking yes, at it Yes, we uh, currently, I don't know if you've noticed, we're doing the storm sewer project down there. As a part of that project, we're gonna take um, and lay a, a sanitary lateral across our parking lot to connect to the existing right. lateral, mm -hmm. so it can be set up for um, when the sewer connection needs to get made. It'll help with a uh, pavement replacement. Um, it'll be laid in essentially the same trench that the storm sewer pipe is just off to the side. Um, and there's also some ADA concerns that were brought up a while back, and we're going to correct those too. So we kind of have a three birds, one stone project. So we'll probably big, we'll split big up. Big ADA concerns? Um, the we did a we did a full review of the, the whole facility. Um, hadn't 
You had an outside consultant come yeah, in to do that. Out of Chicago. Um, the U.S. Attorney's and Department of Justice uh, sent us a letter that they were going to take a look at it. So we, okay. we did a review of it, and there were some modifications that needed to be made, mostly in concrete forms. Mm -hmm. um, they were going to get tore up anyway with the storm sewer project, so we're just going to correct them all. Okay. So. Um, when, will the when will the HESCO barriers be gone? And when will the council learn more about the ongoing environmental assessments? What's the next step after phase one and phase two testing? I'll do HESCOs. You can do environmental. And that's all. And that's all. The HESCOs will not be removed until that flood wall is up. Okay. Uh, they were going to potentially be coming down because of the construction site. Didn't know if there was going to be enough room for them to be able to operate. Um, there is enough room. And I think for protection's sake that it's best if they get left up throughout the whole thing. I mean, in theory, they could be taken down, but if a flood were a flood event were to come, there's no way we would be able to get in there enough time to be able to protect the auditorium. So they're not really hurting anything. The yes, they don't look good, but in the scheme of, of things, they'll be down next May, and then you won't ever have we won't ever have to worry about them again. Not in at that, that location. location. <laughs> <laughs> there there will right need to be use of pesco barriers <laughs> on on the north and south end to be able to tie the flood wall right, and right. have it function. So. Okay. Okay. We had some discussions even with the, the HESCO barriers, specifically on the south side of the facility, um, whether we could remove a portion of those uh, <coughs> while construction is going on. Um, be pretty, it'd be difficult at best to remove any portion of those and still have the ability to put them back up while a construction project is going on over the next few months. That being said, if we take some down, our past experience is that when you try to meld them back together, you create a weak point. Yeah. So, and that's one of the concerns that we want to try to avoid. You know what is giving me a, a well, stinky what, eye What are you with smiling that? about, James? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, before I was so rudely interrupted, uh, anybody else from the audience, comments or concerns? The man in the pretty suit, come on down. Uh, Freddie Starling, 517 South 7th Street, Burlington, Iowa. And I'm here tonight to express my gratitude and appreciation uh, for our city manager. And I know he's going to stay after tonight because we're going to preach. <laughs> but uh, he, brought I, a, he brought a sermon <laughs> with him. Somebody locked the door. <laughs> I am. If I stay, does that change how long you talk? Oh, oh. Terrible. Oh, terrible. Don't worry, he says that to me all the time. Don't worry about it. But I, I am, I'm, I'm, I came tonight. I had a lot of other things that I really, really needed to be doing. But I, I had to come tonight, too. Because you never know. You never know about next week, next month, next council meeting, or whatever. We, but I wanted to uh, say how... Uh, uh, Appreciate the I appreciate the city manager. I appreciate the uh, city council for uh, the five years making a, what I say a very wise choice. Uh, it looks like we're going to have to maybe do it again, but I, I'm grateful and I'm appreciative because uh, there's not one event a service uh, that I called the city manager. Uh, he didn't send someone. Uh, he came himself, and, and I, I want to say I'm, I'm grateful and I thank you because I know there are other things you could have been doing. Uh, you supported the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Council of uh, Churches. Uh, you made, uh, you're encouraging uh, speeches to us. Uh, you encouraged over at uh, the church where I pastor at Faith Temple, uh, situations that were taking place, and uh, we invited you, we called on you. Uh, there was uh, other occasions at the church we called on you and you were very supportive and uh, I want you to know that I really really appreciate it because you didn't have to do it uh, the Dr. King celebration I don't believe you missed the celebration you <laughs> came to the city council meeting you left the city council meeting and you came back and I just uh, wanted you to know how that uh, I appreciate you uh, the ones that I'm working with uh, appreciate you, and I'm, I'm speaking that tonight on their behalf also. And I want to say this. 
there are some bumps in the road. And if you would follow me on preaching on Sunday, Bible class, you name it, <laughs> there are going to be some bumps in the road. That's true. Uh, regardless, uh, as a pastor, uh, you pull out all you pull out, and still you feel that uh, you weren't too uh, appreciated or, or you weren't, uh, you didn't do your best. And sometimes we tend to beat our own selves up. I could have done better. And there are those who say, hey, you did a marvelous job. I did. Uh, you know. So I'm saying tonight, that you're going to run into some bumps in the road. You're going to run into some pats on the back. You're going to run into uh, some, you know, this is just a part of life. And uh, I, I want to uh, just express uh, how grateful I am. And I appreciate you, and uh, and I would love for you to uh, uh, remain. And uh, I guess I'm gonna keep on preaching. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much. Uh, then I want to just ask, uh, was it Eric? How we how we progressing? I hadn't talked with you. You said there was some progress back in July, I believe, and we have about ten months, and we we pray that we can have the shelter house up at Gladys White. We we met with uh, Chris Clements and Jesse Hall, City, City Engineering and uh, Streets and Sewers down at White Park this past Thursday, actually. Uh, wanted to go over where the sewers were located, what some options are there. Uh, that is an area where there will be some future sewer separation issues and items and want to make sure what we do isn't doesn't conflict with that and also uh, work with Jesse on how those would impact that. So uh, looks like we... Uh, Ryan Gorley and myself met down there with uh, Chris and Jesse, uh, trying to get the shelter in this fall on the uh, basketball court area, uh, the asphalt area there to the east, and then do some of the other grading and uh, playground area probably next spring, uh, but wanted to try and uh, do that first phase this fall with the uh, open air shelter, a small open air shelter there, and some of the resurfacing on that asphalt area, and then do the remaining work in the spring when we're able to get design better design work, uh, work with Jesse on that and have that uh, complete over the winter and go out to bid in the spring. So, so the, okay. looking to do the, that shelter this fall yet. Good deal, yep. good deal. But well then done. some of the other improvements wouldn't happen until next spring. Thank you, sir. Mr. Elmer? I want to follow the Reverend as well, Mike Elmer, 620 Iowa Street. Jim, I've talked to you in private several times and I want to share in his thoughts that you've been a very good city manager in helping those words behind hopefully come true. Great place to live, work, and play. And I've talked to hundreds of people that very much would like you to reconsider. So please do. You've done a great job, and this city does need somebody like you. So think about that. Thank you, Mr. Elmer. Any comments or concerns from the audience? You guys have been fantastic tonight. Mr. Teslin? The only other thing you mentioned was Brownfields. We do have a, yes, a website, uh, burlingtonbrownfields.com. If you go to that, that gives an update on um, all the <clears throat> status of the projects. We have two grants, our uh, area-wide planning as well as an assessment grant, and so that gives an update on uh, what we're doing with those and talks about how to, uh, if you have an interest in doing an assessment on your property of phase one or phase two, who to contact and how to do that, and then just what that means. So okay. um, there is a, a website dedicated to the Brownfield projects that we're working on. It's uh, burlingtonbrownfields.com. Okay. What happens potentially with projects or properties that go through the phase one, phase two? Where they, do they get have, have anything in line to deal with any issues that get brought up? Well, it, it, it'll bring up what if there are environmental issues especially the phase two uh, and then uh, make the individual aware of what needs to be done what might not need to be done if they sell or transfer their property um, so that they're fully aware uh, if they're going, wanting to sell or develop their property uh, th these are things that are going to be identified uh, or required when they do sell or develop their property so it makes them aware uh, there are does hopefully set them up to maybe access future grants we don't have we haven't applied for grants at this time for those cleanups, but uh, might be a better in line to uh, be more available to them once they're done. What we've seen from track records and other communities that have gone through this process, uh, at least from a federal level, uh, the EPA funding when they do planning grants or the assessment grants, uh, they typically 
put you into a more favorable status when you go for applying for cleanup grants for projects, uh, similar to what we did with the Dresser Rand site. We didn't get it. Well, you, you have a more a, a greater likelihood of getting being successful on those grant applications uh, if you've if they've been involved with you over a period of years doing the assessments up front. Um, but that being said, that cleanup process working with the EPA is a decade or two decades of work that you see occurring. Um, Sioux City is an example just announced a, a major project uh, on the Morrell, the John Morrell site, the former Morrell site. That was an, a cleanup grant that they received back in 2012 on a major site and they're just now in a position where they're seeing further work being able to be done. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, so even within the context of what's been the case with the EPA in the, over the last one or two decades, it's a slow process. Uh, given a national framework uh, where the EPA has uh, seen a dramatic change in focus, we're not really sure what's happening with the potential for cleanup grants as we move forward coming out of the assessment process. Uh, but as time goes on, it would make sense for the community to try to, where we can, to move forward with the, the cleanup grants as possible. I don't know if that gives a little bit more detail. It's not necessarily specific to the property in question. Okay. Kathleen, do you have anything? Antoinette? You of course. always do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Oh, my goodness. It's a busy week this week. Well, the bees are in town. Okay. Uh, so they're playing at Community Field uh, every day, basically. Every day. Dance and Bobby <laughs> will be out there. Yes. 6.30 to 9. It's always a fun time. Um, Wednesday, out at Stars Cave, they have um, this free rock climbing thing. You know, you don't need any experience. You just go out there and learn a little bit about some rock climbing. They Old that... people can do it too? Yeah. You gotta stop out there, Jim. Ah. Go ahead. <laughs> That's from uh, 1 to 4. So, you know, go out there, walk the trails. That should be good. That's Wednesday, the 23rd. Um, then, of course, the farmer's market. That's going on until the 28th. Wait, that's it's ending soon, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, man. Got to get out there and get all your... Yeah, stock up on uh, fresh yeah. ve fresh vegetables. You can always fresh, can it. Fresh veggies. Or the, there's some canned ones out there already. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's from 4.30 to 7.30 on, on Thursday. So that's fun. Family Art Day at the Art Center. That is on Saturday from 11 to 2. That's going to be fun. Bring out all the kiddos. And this is in West Burlington, this next event. But that's OK, because it's for the Des Moines County Humane Society. There you go. <laughs> you bring out your dog, paddle in the park from 12 to 3, $5 per dog, $1 per human. And then Sunday, one of my favorite places, the Capitol Theater, is the movie day, Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets. Kids 12 and under are free, and the adults are just $5. One showing at 2, uh, and the other showing at 7. That's Sunday. So all kinds of good stuff going on, all kinds of different hours. Get out there and have some fun, people. Enjoy our little wonderful town. You know, so she said that. Get out there and have some fun, people. Enjoy our <laughs> wonderful. No. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Thank all you. All right. All right. Mayor Pro Tem. Hundreds of young people are going out to have fun on a Wednesday because school starts. <laughs> <laughs> What's about to where he is going with that? <laughs> and it looks like some parents are going to. Have <laughs> you, you know it. <laughs> Chief, Chief, would you like to say anything about traffic and <laughs> Hundreds of kids. school buses and Oh yeah. I know I'm I'm putting you on the spot here, but Yeah, no, it'll be like every year. I mean, through the <laughs> Governor's Traffic Safety Alliance we get that grant every year and we spend probably eighty percent of those dollars enforcing the speed limits in the school zones and especially the first two or three weeks of school. I mean we all know it's coming, but it's it's a stark reminder you know, that we really need to be mindful in the school zones. 
Uh, one thing I will say about the school bus violations, we I think are all fairly aware of the camera systems that they have on the buses now that are very detailed. <laughs> and with that said, that ticket will cost you your driver's license. So, I mean, you need to really be cautious. I mean, when a school bus puts out its arm and the stop signal, that's what it means. So, mm -hmm. and it's not just the, your inconvenience of having to stop, but it's the safety of our children. So that's, that's number right. one. That's right. right. That's right. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. And so there's a number of my friends who are former teachers, and we kind of get happy on Wednesday, too, because we go play golf instead of go teach. So. Oh. <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything. Not that I didn't like my job, because I love my job. And I, anyway, it's my turn to go play golf. There you go. Well, I'm a substitute teacher, yeah. so I'm looking forward to being with the students mm -hmm. if they call me. Otherwise, that's all I have for tonight. Okay. Uh, Jim, I've got something for tonight, and uh, I'm going to put you on the, I'm going to put you in a corner, and I'm going to put you, put the heat on you, and uh, you're not going to weasel your way out of this one. Oh, uh, more superintendent? So, more so than dean or <laughs> reverend? I mean, <laughs> I had superintendent come down for backup, so, uh, Here's how this is going to be, brother. Where's he going? Oh. Could you give us your name, please, and address? My name is Shane McCampbell. I live at Bob Fleming's house in the basement. <laughs> this is serious business, Jim. It says, after many emails and letters received over the last few weeks from city staff, department heads, citizens, and local businessmen, I am compelled to do what a mayor should do in a time such as this. I must ask you to stay on as our city manager, not only to finish out this year, but to commit to at least to the year, to the end of 2018. We're so close to reaching goals that were implemented by you, and we're still in the midst of projects that just cannot be finished without the present team assembled to make sure everything continues as planned. I realize, as does the council, that you made your decision and that you were satisfied with it. As a council and a city, we're not satisfied. I told you years ago, when you first came here, that we were going to be like a small family. And as a small family, we can be honest with each other. The honesty for you is that you know this job and you've already cultivated a relationship with staff. You know the surprises that are facing us these next few years and you've already begun the process of how you will help us to face them. You have a good support team around you, yes, even at City Hall. And as you continue to deal with the perplexities of life, I as the mayor and we, the city, of, the city council of Burlington, Iowa, collectively reject your resignation immediately <laughs> and we're calling you back to work as our permanent city manager right now i also hope we groom our assistant city manager and prepare him for the next opportunity that presents itself down the road we thank you for your past work and we look forward to seeing you or seeing it through into the future and we thank you for accepting so jim i'm putting you on the hot seat but i'm going to ask you on behalf of citizens and this council to finish this year out for us and to see us through 2018 to make sure that we've, uh, we're have we in a position to, uh, to move forward. And uh, I'm going to ask for a reply from you tonight. No pressure. No pressure. So. I second the motion. <laughs> I think he secretly hates me. <laughs> it's not a secret. I don't think it's a secret. There have been a lot of comments that have come across over the last couple of weeks. I know you all have received them. I have too. It's been a nice, tremendous outpouring. Um, you know, there have been some changes that have occurred in the last couple of weeks too that changed some of the circumstances. Uh, and I hope you can realize that we have, well, we as a family have gone through a lot this year, which is probably part of the context for, for stuff. Um, 
And I think of Reverend you speaking. Um, one of the things that I think of, I think it's 2 Corinthians 5, 9. <laughs> Therefore, I make it my ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to him. You know, I try to do what I can, and I don't do it very good sometimes. But the goal here is to do whatever comes in front of us as well as we can, not for ourselves, but for what we demonstrate to the world around us. You know, and that starts for me first and foremost, taking care of my family. Yep. And this year is unique with that. Uh, but given that part of taking care of my family is making sure in they're, they're in the right place too. And I can retract my resignation for now. James. That means you have to accept that. I, make, I move that we accept. Do I have a second? Second. How does the superintendent feel about it? We're out of, out of order. We're, We're out, out of order. order. We're out of order. We're, out of, <laughs> <laughs> We're, We're so out of order right now. Okay. Um, we appreciate everybody, uh, uh, your, your kindness I, tonight, your concern. Yes, sir. We did have another item. Did we? Yes. If Eric wanted to put up a picture. Please do. We're so out of order right now. <laughs> so going back to when we did the, the flood wall, um, one of the things that uh, VNK had talked about uh, was as they put together the full design was trying to go after various pieces of additional funding to help to do other components. Um, one of those was for boat docks, the, the extended boat dock that comes out, that's shown here uh, out from the the flood wall uh, running the entire length. Uh, they, they had worked on a full uh, proposal that would include not just the work there, but putting lighting along there, uh, doing some expansions off of the uh, port, uh, putting in a fish cleaning, I think it had fish, fish cleaning in it, uh, some restroom facilities, outdoor restroom facilities that would be there that voter people tying up to the boater docks would be able to come in and use. All those components, the overall project they had looking at a, like a three and a half million dollar project. And they were talking about going after various funds to try to see if they could accomplish that. Um, we did get, uh, we are going to be meeting with DNR uh, next, uh, the beginning of September, um, as a follow up to an application that we had s submitted last year with this project. Uh, boating infrastructure grant program. It's the state of Iowa program. Um, they, they, the application was for $200,000 of funds to help do the planning and design work for a, this project to occur. Um, that same grant fund, if we're able to move, fo we're able to move forward, would be something that would be eligible to then springboard out of the planning to go and apply for funding from that same source for construction work. And other communities have been able to leverage uh, that funding to use the, um, get the design work done on the upfront and then do the design work and then go to that same fund to get the project completed in, in later years. So we're looking, just wanna let you know that we're looking decent for moving forward with, with this project. Yeah. Now that being said, the overall project that was put in was a pretty significant figure, and, and that's something that we need to talk with VNK and the state about. Where where can we go with this? Uh, what do we can we do? Can we look at a, the concept of the overall thing, or can we submit for a portion, or or what? But that's something that we'll be visiting with DNR over the next few weeks. That's all I really had. I wanted to make sure you just knew where we were sitting on that. Okay. Are we good then? I do have a couple things that I wanted to put on um, to discuss, I guess, maybe at a later date. Okay. Um, the ordinances, um, things like that for good deal. Good uh, deal. Building codes, unsafe houses. I just kind of wanted to bring that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put that on there to talk about. Good deal. Thank you. Anything else? I move that we adjourn. Second. Moved in second. Kathleen, let's vote. McCampbell. Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Fleming? Aye.
this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Council.